All right. Welcome to graduation forum for final clearance. This is just a breakdown of what is supposed to happen in the next week or two um, in regards to your final clearance. So majority of you have gone through pre-clearance. You've done the academic pre-review of your academic record to determine if you have met, met all or majority of the minimum requirements that you need to apply on Bison Web. If you were approved, then you were given the opportunity to go on Bison Web and apply for spring graduation. If you were denied, it does not mean that you are completely out of the running. You may be still on track to graduate, but because you did not meet one of the minimum, one or more of the minimum requirements, we could not allow you to apply on Bison Web. And then we have those who are simply denied and they cannot seem to fix the issue in the same semester it would take for them to actually um, finish their degree. And as it's been stated, you have to have all academic requirements and all financial requirements met in order to participate in the ceremony. So some of you are working on your final clearance right now um, and you're waiting for your final academic clearance before you can move to the ceremony, okay? So for those who have met their pre-clearance application, you are now on final clearance. What happens in final clearance? All spring graduates will then be reviewed once their final grades come in and their comprehensive exams. Those who took comprehensive ex exams at the end of March, and some of you are still taking them per your departments. So the scores are rolling in daily um, and weekly. If you are in one of the largest majors, such as political science or biology or psychology, it may take a couple of weeks for your scores to actually come back. So that is not unusual. So please do not panic. Um, sometimes uh, I do not get the score results until the week before or the week of um, the grades being due. So that is common for the larger majors. So during that time, if you have passed your all of your spring courses and your comprehensive exams have a passing result, you will be notified via an email, just like in the pre-clearance process. You will be notified that says, hello, Jasmine Smith, you have met all of the requirements to receive your degree your major of, your minor of, and your honor status consists of this. Please maintain this memorandum for your record. Your name will be sent to the Dean's office for recommendation to receive your degree. And it's important that you understand that I do not make the final decision on whether you receive your degree. I only verify that you've met all of the requirements and then I send your name to the Dean's office for the faculty vote. And at that time, they determine if you should be awarded. So all your grades have to be on your transcript, not in Blackboard, and your comprehensive scores have to be received by me. You do not have to do anything at this time. This is simply a waiting period. There is nothing for me to report to you because you're currently taking courses and scores are being graded. So during this period, you may be anxious and you feel like, I know I should be doing something, but there's actually nothing for you to do. It is simply waiting. So once your names are submitted to the Dean's office, the faculty gather on a specific day and then they do a faculty vote. At that time, they will review the names of people who have um, been recommended to receive their degree. Um, most times it is an easy vote and those, everyone on the list is uh, recommended to receive their degree. Sometimes there will be someone, one or two people that actually have not finished something and they will pull your name and ask me to verify if all the requirements are in for the student. So if you know that you have you failed your final course, 
maybe at your senior seminar or your organic chem course, and you know it's a major required course, then it should not be a shock that you do not receive notification that you are finally cleared, or if a grade is inputted incorrectly and it's changed in the meantime, um, that your, your actual name may be pulled from the final list to be recommended. This is a very rare occasion. Um, I've been doing this for five years and I've only had it happen maybe twice. <clears throat> so if you've done everything and everything is good, then there are no issues. So once the faculty votes, then there is an official document that must be signed by the Dean's office um, and then sent to the office of the registrar. At that time, the office of the registrar will then go through and award you your honors on your transcript and the date of conferment. So the actual date of conferring your degrees is the Saturday ceremony. So I believe that is May 7th. So when you go in to look at your transcript to see if you have been awarded and you should order your transcript to be sent to a school or to a job, you're looking for the date of May 7th and it will say awarded next to the actual major and minor um, or concentration, if you have one, that you have been awarded. Okay, do not order your transcript before you see that date. It will be um, unofficial at that time. If you are not academically finally clear, please do not panic. Um, and, and some people just, email all over the university, please don't do that. Um, just email me and let me know, hey, Ms. Young, I'm working on a grade change from a professor, he put in the wrong grade, or this may have occurred, um, I'm working through it, or just say, Ms. Young, what are my next steps? I did not pass my last class. And then I can help you through the process. Um, a lot of things occur during final clearance that some may, sometimes may be out of your control, um, but I will help you walk through the process. When you escalate issues, you then alert a lot of people to an actual issue, and it may take, it may take longer and may be a harder process for you to actually resolve when you do that. Um, also, if you have to, if you do not pass final clearance and you have to return in the summertime, you are not going to be able to walk across the stage or finally clear. So please make sure you end that before you invite your parents and fly everybody in. That is important that you remember that you have to pass your courses in order to be financially, I mean, academically cleared to participate in any ceremonies. Those who have to return in the summertime, it is fine. You can complete your courses in the summertime. You will be awarded at that time, and then you will return for the ceremony of 2023. That is it. You will have a July 22 date on your transcript and you will just participate in a ceremony, which means you can still do all of the things within the 22 academic year, such as taking pictures, ordering your cap and gown and doing anything that you want. Remember, you're only participating in the 2023 ceremony. Um, if you do not pass your comprehensive exams, you will not be academically cleared. That is a requirement per your departments and per the university. Um, you will not be cleared until you actually pass the exam, and then you will be moved to the semester with, for which you pass them. So if you are currently a 22 spring graduate, but you have to return for fall 22, because that is the next time that they give the exam, you will then be a fall 22 graduate. So everyone has gone through the process. You submitted your preclearance. You've been reviewed. You have your email of your status. Um, you've applied for graduation. You should have gotten your graduation fee attached to your account. If not, it is an office of the registrar function. So let them know that you never would charge your account. Some people had credits, so they didn't realize that they did not the fee was automatically uh, debited from whatever credit they had. Um, and so now we're just at the part where we're waiting for final grades. 
um, and comprehensive scores to come in. Financial clearance is done through the financial aid and bursar office. I do not have any knowledge or the process of what they do. Um, however, this must be taken care of before you can pick up tickets or participate in a ceremony. It includes your tuition and fees. Um, they sometimes will bill you for any library books, any damage to residence halls or any missing keys. They may charge you for those things. And then if you are um, have loans, financial loans from federal, state, unsubsidized and subsidized loans, you must go onto your FAFSA and do the exit interview. Um, this is only for your undergrad experience, so it should not affect you going to grad school. That is separate, um, um, a separate financial statement. So again, only those who have received academic and financial clearance can participate in graduation. The deadlines I will go over shortly for you so that all those who still have pending things can get that in before the end of the financial clearance. But just to let you know, um, in the past we've cleared financial, we're at, we've academically, sorry, we've academically cleared people up until the day of the ceremony. So as long as you get it in there before your actual ceremony can begin, you can participate. Now that may um, affect your name and other things being called, but we can still add it at the last minute. So the information for the university um, website, um, available times, graduation, it is currently um, available. So if you go to graduation commencement, Howard, Howard University, you will see all of the information posted. I did receive the link. So once I finish this, I'll actually start posting the things that I received in the chat box for you. <clears throat> so again, after you have graduated on May 7th, take some time, relax, do what you need to do. Your degree is going to be conferred after that date. It takes, up, it takes about 10 weeks for your degree to be conferred, but it can take longer. If you need documentation from Howard University that says that you've met all your, your requirements, you are able to receive a letter um, based off the email that I sent you or from the Dean's office. So it can be from either one of those offices. Once your degree has been conferred, if you need a verification that you have been awarded, you can also request it from the Office of the Registrar. Your actual diplomas are not mailed until about 10 weeks after you are awarded. So if you're awarded in June, your, your diploma usually is not ordered until about July. Um, so you will likely not get your actual paper diploma until around August. If around that time you do not see it, then contact the Office of the Registrar to find out if your degree was mailed, if your address is incorrect, um, if it was returned, or anything like that. Um, I've gone over honors numerous times, but let me say it again because I do not um, want anyone to um, uh, feel disappointed or upset or have their parents call me. This is the policy of the university. It is based off of your GPA, maintaining 12 credit hours per every semester, 12 or more credit hours per semester. Um, and not having any repeats on your um, academic record. If you do not meet one of those qualifications, then you are automatically eliminated. It is in a system that pulls the information. So it cannot be ignored. We can't round up per your GPA and what you should have. Right now, we are working based on what you currently have. And then once your spring grades come in, then you will be upgraded to the new honor status. So the first honor status that you may see in the book may be different from the one that you are actually awarded on your transcript. 
after you are awarded on your transcript, if there is an issue, then contact me or the dean's office so that we can verify that you were awarded correctly. So these are the honors distinctions. And remember right now, we're going off of what you currently have up until the fall semester because spring grades are not out. So if you see that this is where you currently stand, please do not panic. Once spring grades all are in, we will then upgrade your status. So students who are graduating with honors and medallions, uh, um, honors will pick up honors scores and medallions from your department, I believe they're still doing it. I do believe they are giving out honors scores and medallions this semester. So double check with your department. You can also check with the bookstore or the office of the registrar, but I do believe that they are giving those out this year. Um, so frequently asked questions, when can, We'll skip the at graduation part. Um, what if you take a, a class to graduate and it's not being offered? We'll skip that part. Can I graduate with a balance? Howard is not allowing you to graduate with a balance and they are taking um, no cash. <laughs> they wanted me to, exp uh, no cash and um, you're able to pay cashier's check, credit uh, or debit, but no cash. And it has to be cash and or it has to be paid. All amounts have to be paid in order for you to participate in the ceremony. So they wanted me to stress that. If you are currently enrolled in consortium class, um, please check with the school that you're currently enrolled in to see when they will be submitting your grade. Your grade has to be in at Howard in order for it to clear, especially if it's a required course. Um, Please talk to the previous school to see where, when they will be turning in your transfer to Howard University, um, because you know your school, Howard Office of the Registrar, is not going to rush to process your information just because you're graduating. So make sure that you make time to get that in so that you can still participate for the ceremony. Um, all graduates should complete an exit. Um, interview through your FAFSA if you have loans. Um, it is considered exiting or closing out accounts for the university. If you have not met with the financial aid department in regards to any outstanding debts, and I'll give you some tips at the in a couple minutes on what you should do once you meet with them, um, please do so. You can schedule appointments on the financial aid website. They have a link that allows you to schedule to meet with them, or you can go to the office. Can you walk across the stage if you still have outstanding academic requirements? You cannot. I will not approve anyone who still has academic requirements to be met. This does not include swimming. Due to the pandemic, you were asked to, try to uh, take a substitute course. However, due to the limited amount of courses, not everyone was able to get in swimming. So swimming will not hold you here to complete your degree. Can you graduate if you have a D in your major or your minor? In your major, you cannot. In your minor, yes, you can. As long as you're maintaining a 2.0 in that minor, you should be all right. So just going over the final clearance process, the last step we're on is step three. You're waiting for your final grade to post on your transcript, not Blackboard and you're waiting for your comprehensive scores to be received by me. You will know if your scores have been received. If I do not contact you, I am only contacting people who I do not have scores from. And I have been contacting them every day that the scores come in. I have received the political science department, philosophy, uh, sociology and criminology as of right now. So. I am working with those students who I do not see scores from to see if they can still take the exam. If not, what are their next steps? Students will receive a final clearance email when grades and comp requirements have been met. So there are, there is no need to email me. There is no need to give your mom, your dad, your grandma, or anyone else my email to contact me during the final clearance process. Um, 
there is another part of the final clearance process. Once I send you your email, I then have to add your name to the bookstore list for you to receive your tickets. So there is some data entry stuff that I have to do on the back end. And then I send everyone a notification, just like pre-clearance after four o'clock um, every day during the pre-clearance process until everyone has been pre-cleared. So it will go on from April 25th until May 5th usually is the last day. But again, on May 6th is the Friday ceremony for COAS. Um, COAS usually goes early in the morning. If there's like one or two people that we still need to clear, then we can do that. But we usually are done by that Thursday. All right, I'm going to skip that and move directly to the final clearance um, breakdown sheet that I sent. So you can pull that up if you need to. But I'm gonna share my screen so that you can see. So final comps are being received right now. They're coming in daily and weekly, as I said. So you don't need to worry about that. Your department is responsible for contacting you and letting you know if you passed or failed. I do not tell students that they have not passed the comprehensive exam. Um, I only record and they only send me students who have passed the exam. I will then notify you I do not have results for you. And then it's up to you to follow up with your department or provide me with documentation that you were you did pass the exam. Sometimes it's just a matter of students putting in the wrong day. Sometimes they put in that they took the exam in spring 2022, but they actually meant that they took it in spring 2021. So that just means that I have to go back to the spring 2021 records to determine if your name is there or not. If that's the case, then I find your results and then your status is then updated. So we've already talked about honors. Um, your first pool will then have your current honor status. And then once grades come in, your second pool will then take place and your status will then be upgraded. Senior grades are due April 22nd. I am pushing the Dean's office to tell all faculty to please have the grades in on this date so that on the 25th, all grades are already in over the weekend and we can just simply clear you. You can uh, prepare to get hair and nails done and participate in the ceremony. Final clearance review again starts April 25th and it will go until May 5th. Um, again, sometimes we will clear up until the 6th. There is no clearing on the 7th. First names are submitted to the Dean's office by May 4th. That's the first list that goes, and then we, is, we continuously send a list every day thereafter. Uh, <clears throat> degree conferral ceremony, again, I said was May 7th. So let's just talk about some things that I want you to think about. And these are things that uh, I found out with working with students and also things that I think um, I should have known after I graduated. So for graduation fees, uh, all graduation fees should be applied to your account. Please don't think you're getting over if you're waived that fee unless they specifically say and document that you're being waived and you have a negative uh, account or balance for that um, because they will re-audit your account after you graduate. And if they feel that they did not um, award you or charge you for the fee, they will then place the fee on your account and then block you from actually being able to get your transcript. So it's important that you do not dodge fees from Howard because they do audit their account every summer. Um, HHPL requirements, as I said, advisors are all aware about the swimming has been substituted. There's nothing else that you need to do. We don't need to go into degree works and void that or waive that into the system. It's already been documented everywhere and it will not hold you up if you do not have a substitution course. We will not keep you here for swimming. Applications on Bison Well will stay active. So a lot of students have been emailing me saying, hey, my, my status still says active or pending for my graduation status. 
well, you have not finished your courses yet. You have not final, finally cleared. So therefore it's still active and pending until you do. Um, this will stay this way up until 10 weeks after the ceremony or more when you're awarded. Once you're awarded, then you will, that will change from active pending to graduate. We've already gone over the honor status and comprehensive exams. So I'm gonna go to one of the most important things, which is your major match. So after the ceremony, once the Dean gets your information and your information is sent to the Office of the Registrar, they will then award you to your degree. Now, the Office of the Registrar sometimes will question if your major and your minor do not match what is in the system. Now, I am perfectly aware that majority of you have done the application to change your major multiple times and it has never changed. However, today I am offering you the opportunity to do that and attach my name to the um, major change form. And then I will make sure that you have done the form correctly and they process your form. Um, if the majors and minors match, then they usually do not ask any questions. And then your application is just awarded um, appropriately. I go based on what you put on the pre-clearance application. So that is how you're reviewed. And then that is how I submit your name. And when they ask me, I tell them, please use what I submitted as confirmation. But the student requested or expects their major and minor to be. All right, second most important thing, keeping records after you graduate or currently, if you have been financially clear and you've gone to the Bursar Financial Aid Office and everything they say you don't owe, screenshot your e-pays, your financial documents, D, uh, PDF it, download it, save it to your personal email, move all graduation notifications and documents, documentation that you will receive from me and have received from me to your personal email. Um, check your ePay account billing statement after you have graduated. If it's 10 weeks and you've already been awarded and you don't see any statement, screenshot it and move it to your personal email. Um, the reason I'm telling you this is because, like I said, the Office of the uh, Bursar and Financial Aid do do audits at the end of the summer. So you could have financially cleared um, and passed everything. And then once the audit comes up, they realize something did not disperse or whatever the case may be, and they can't add a fee or charge to your account. But majority of the time, students don't have any documentation to say that they were finally clear. And so they end up having to pay the amount because they need the transcript. So while you're in good financial standing, print out your unofficial transcript, PDF it, save it to your um, laptop or your computer or to email it to your personal account. And also we know from a cyber attack and other things that happen at Howard, things can go down and then your email could not work uh, after you graduated. They do send you a notification and tell you that we are closing your account. Sometimes it happens between six months to a year after you graduated. So that if there are important papers or documents um, or academic records that you wanna keep, make sure you move that to your personal email account or download that, put it on a PDF or a um, flash drive so that you can keep it after your tenure here at Howard. Um, that is something that I wish someone would have told me. And also um, seeing working with students who have graduated so far, I have seen balances appear after they've graduated. So please um, document your financial status currently and right after you graduate and keep that for your records. And also, if you graduated, um, keep that for your records as well, because all graduation audits do occur as well. And you need documentation to say, yes, I was clear at this time of meeting all of my requirements and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to stop it here and because it's 1230 and I'm going to open it up to 
as many questions as I can answer. Samantha.